Voxedit. Hello, Voxel fans. I know many of you have been waiting a long time to see a major update for Voxedit, and here it is. The new version is officially released and available for download from voxedit.io. Not only has the whole user interface received a gorgeous makeover, but the program runs faster and is more stable with a bunch of new features like inverse kinematics and block editing. If you want to learn how modeling and animation works in VoxEdit, check out the tutorial playlist up here. For this video, we're just going to see what changed from the previous versions. This video is sponsored by The Sandbox, a blockchain-powered game creation platform. If you're interested in creating your own game world with The Sandbox, consider applying for The Sandbox Game Makers Fund. Make a pitch for your own game idea, and if your pitch is accepted, you'll be given a development budget and tools to make your game a reality. This grant program is only approving up to 100 pitches, so don't wait to visit the link in the description. When you first open VoxEdit, you'll be greeted by a News tab which links to various Sandbox-related pages. The top one will take you to the new interactive guidelines for artists, so you can learn things like how the game maker will calculate collision boxes from your object. On the left are three more tabs for the Modeler, the Animator, which used to be called the Rigger, and the new Block Editor. Each of these has a new asset button, recent file list, and open file button. The animator tab also has a list of templates. Each of these is a preset asset rig with several animations that can be called for in the game maker. Now, if you want to make a character or creature, you don't have to design and animate your own rig from scratch. You can select a template and modify the objects attached to the rig to customize your figure. It will be ready to upload to the marketplace as a fully animated asset. To prevent accidental editing, most of the animation and rigging tools are disabled when using a template. Let's take a look at the full animator mode, which has been rearranged a bit. The skeleton panel now stretches from the top to bottom, so long lists of nodes are easier to manage. You can also collapse the branches of nodes. The currently selected node and all of its parent nodes get a blue highlight, so you can easily see how objects are connected. All the node controls that used to be on the right-click menu can now be accessed by left-clicking the three dots. The pencil button lets you edit the object attached to the node, and the option to edit the objects from the library has been removed. The inspector has been bundled as a tab behind the library panel to make room for the timeline. The timeline now only displays the current node selected and its children, so you don't have to scroll vertically to find the node you want. You can also change the node highlight color, which will make it stand out in both the skeleton and timeline. The right-click menu for the animation selector has also been moved to a three-dot menu. Acceleration curves on the timeline are still selected with a right-click menu, but an option has been added to allow long-way rotation. By default, rotations turn to the shortest option, choosing 90 degrees clockwise over 270 degrees counterclockwise. Checking long-way rotation will override that behavior and force the longer rotation between those specific keyframes. This can mean a lot fewer keys and easier control of the animation. Beside the position and rotation info that the old panel displayed, there is an added area for inverse kinematic options. Inverse kinematics is a complicated subject that I'll go over in more detail in another video. The basics are that you set an anchor point, then a chain of IK joints. You can set how many directions the joint can bend and how flexible it is. When you turn on the IK system from the button at the top, moving the IK joints will drag the other nodes along and automatically set keyframes for them. This will give you much more fluid animations and save a lot of time that used to be put into manually setting the rotation on every joint. You may have noticed that the scale option is missing from the inspector. Scaling has been permanently removed because it is incompatible with the game maker. This is unfortunate for my video about adding special effects to animations, but particle effects are planned for the game maker itself, so you will be able to accomplish similar effects when that tool is available. Opening up an object on the rig, we can see that the modeler is mostly the same layout. However, in the 3D view you can now see a ghost image of the other rigged items, making it easier to design parts around your existing build. Ghosting can be toggled with the other display options in the bottom right corner. If you haven't noticed already, Shading in VoxEdit has improved massively, and I love it. There is now consistent shadow casting. Before, if you imported a model for Magicka Voxel, the shadow direction was set by the object orientation, making items repeated with rotation look inconsistent and weird. 
Looking at the top left corner of the screen, there is a new button which can give you split or quad view panes. One view pane is always 3D, and the other are always flat 2D projections. Each pane allows you to set a different direction to get the best side. Also, hovering the mouse over a voxel in a 2D plane will display a highlight on the 3D one. In the 3D pane, you can now toggle between perspective and orthographic views. Finally, in both the animator and the modeler, there is an arrow defining the front of your object. It's important to make sure your objects face forward because that will set the direction they face in the game maker when defining things like walking forwards or turning left. At the top of the toolbar, you will see the long-awaited selection mode. It works the same as the other modes with all the tools. Once the selection is made, you can drag it around like an object in the rigger. Attempting to rotate, flip, or resize with a selection made might not have the results that you expect at this point. However, copy, cut, and paste have been added to the edit menu at the top, which means you can cut a selection out of an object, perform a rotation or flip, then paste the selection back in. Make sure your object is big enough to hold the pasted selection, as it will try to go to its exact position, even if the volume rotated away. Select all and deselect all are upcoming features that haven't been implemented yet. Lastly for the modeler, let's look at color. There is now a color picker tool, with a shortcut key of Alt or Option on Max to activate it once. In the swatch palette, you can save and load palettes as PNG strips. The last newcomer to VoxEdit is the block editor. In the game maker, Objects and characters are built with voxel models and rigs, but the game terrain you play on is built out of one cubic meter blocks, like in Minecraft. With scaling removed, everything in the sandbox now uses 32 voxels per meter scale, so the blocks allow 32 by 32 images on each side. The block editor is mostly the same as the modeler with some tools removed. The difference is the block sides panel, which shows a 2D view of each six sides. From this panel, you can select each side individually and flip or rotate them. You can still flip or rotate the entire block from the top bar. Each block face can be exported or imported as a 32 by 32 pixel PNG, making it easy to duplicate faces across multiple blocks to keep a similar style going. Clicking and dragging on a face will copy one image to the next. Just like in the modeler, you can select perspective, ortho, or 2D views. In the block editor, selecting a 2D view will show you a 3x3 grid of the block so you can see how it looks patterned. So I know I mentioned the game maker a lot in this video, and some of you are probably eager to learn about that. That's a whole separate program that I'll be making videos for as well when it gets a public release. So please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when those videos come out. And if you found this helpful, give it a like. Be sure to follow me or The Sandbox on Twitter to get all the news on VoxEdit, The Game Maker, and the upcoming land sales. As always, thank you for watching.